Hi, this video is going to take a look at ACT problems that have to do with rules of exponents. So I'm going to go over all the rules of exponents first and explain um, how and why they work. And then I've got seven sample problems that use the rule of exponents that we're going to go over as well. Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at rules of exponents. So our first rule of exponent is when we multiply um, two variables that have exponents, we're going to add the exponents. So something like this, x to the third plus x to the fourth, or times x to the fourth rather equals x to the seventh. And let's see why that works. Let's break it down. So if we have x to the third, that's multiplying x three times. Uh, x to the fourth is multiplying x four times. So we're just adding the number of times that we're multiplying together. So if we get um, third and fourth, then it's going to be the seventh. We're multiplying seven times. Okay, and then the next one is dividing. Um, so rather than adding, we're going to subtract here. So if we've got something like x to the fifth divided by x to the third, we're going to get x to the second. Five minus three is two. And for a visual for that, if you've got five um, x's being divided by three x's, we're subtracting because that's the number of x's that are going to cancel out. So if we look at that uh, fraction there, three of those are going to cancel out and we're going to be left with two. So that's why we're going to subtract to get the answer there. When we raise to a power on the next rule, um, we're going to end up multiplying. So x squared to the fourth is going to be two times four or x to the eighth. And visually what that we're doing there is we've got x squared and the number of times that we're multiplying it together is 4. So we've got to do 2 times 4 to get the total number of times we're multiplying 8 together. Okay, and in the next property, uh, we have two things inside of parentheses raised to a power. And all this is saying is when we have two things inside the parentheses, we've got to raise both to that power. So if we've got something like x, y to the fourth, both the x and the y have to be taken to the fourth power. But where some people make mistakes is when you've got two x all to the third power, the two needs to be raised to the third power, as well as the x being raised to the third power. So this is going to simplify to eight x to the third. The next rule just tells us that anything to the zero power is one. So even if we've got something complicated like this, raised to the zero power, we still get one. So rather than just memorizing that anything to the zero power equals one, let's see why that would make sense. So here I've got powers of two. So if you go up from the power two to the one to two to the two second, we have to multiply by two. So each time we go up here, we've got to multiply by two. So going down from two to the fourth down to two to the third, we're going to divide by 2. Same thing for the next one. Divide by 2 and get 4. Divide by 2 to get 2. So to go from 2 to the first to 2 to the second, we have to divide by 2, which gets us 1. So that's just a demonstration of how something to the 0 power um, needs to equal 1. The next rule addresses negative exponents. So if something's to a negative exponent, it's the same as 1 over that same thing to a positive exponent. So if you've got x to the negative 7th, that's the same as 1 over x to the positive 7th. 1 over x to the negative 5th is the same as x to the positive 5th. Where this really comes in handy in simplifying expressions is that we can use this to get rid of negative exponents. So x to the negative 5th, we can move from the numerator to the denominator and have it become positive 5. Same thing with the z. We can move the z from the denominator to the numerator, and it becomes, instead of negative 4, it becomes positive 4. So we can use this to, as a first step to get rid of all negative exponents and then work from there. And the last rule addresses what do we have, um, what do we do when we have x brought up to a fraction? So the numerator is going to be the power, and the denominator is going to be the root. So if we have something like x to the 1 half, it's the square root of x. x to the 1 third is the cube root of x. So the denominator becomes the root. 
But once we get a numerator instead of one, there's two different things that we can do. We can put the numerator inside as the power, so the fifth root of x to the fourth, or we can take the whole thing, the fifth root of x, and raise the whole thing to the fourth. And it's important to know both of these different ways because if we're evaluating and simplifying, sometimes it's easier to um, do the fourth inside, and sometimes it's easier to do it outside. Okay, let's take a look at these seven problems involving rules of exponents. All right. On the first one, we're just multiplying. Um, we need to remember when we're multiplying, we're adding the exponents, but the numbers that we're multiplying, the two and three, we're still multiplying. Notice that they put five in a couple of these answers. So if you made the mistake and added the two and three, um, they're trying to get you to make that mistake and pick F or J. So remember that we're still multiplying. So the two times the three is six. Then when we multiply the x to the fourth and the x to the fifth, then we're adding the exponents. So we get x to the ninth. And then y um, times y to the eighth. Notice also that they have y to the eighth as a choice uh, to, to be able to um, lead you towards a wrong answer. y is just the same as y to the one. You can put one if that helps you. So then when we have one and eight, then that becomes y to the ninth. So the final answer is going to be 6, x to the ninth, y to the ninth, which is h. All right, in the second problem, we are raising to a power. So when we raise to a power, um, we multiply exponents. So the x value is going to be x to the 6th. The 4 is also inside the parentheses. The 4 also needs to be raised to the third power. Um, so notice the, the answers that they give you. They give you an answer with 4 not raised to a power. Or they give you 12, which is if you multiplied 4 times a 3. The 4 is not an exponent. The 4 is just a number being raised to the third power. So 4 to the third power gets us 64, and our final answer for this one's going to be g, 64, x to the sixth. All right, third problem. Um, we're basically trying to simplify this. A uh, couple ways to do it. First of all, the 3 divided by 3 is going to get us 1, so the 3 is going to cancel. Um, you could do division right away and go a to the fourth and a to the 6. So we're dividing, so we subtract. So we're going to get a to the 4 minus 6, which is the same as a to the minus 2. And then rewrite a to the minus 2 as 1 over a to the positive 2. Right, So that leads us to uh, answer k. Uh, the other way to look at this, too, is just by canceling. So if you cancel the threes cancel, and then a to the fourth and a to the sixth, four goes into six two times, and it leaves a to the second in the denominator. So that also gets us one over a squared, just another way of looking at it. Uh, the fourth problem is similar to the second problem. We're raising to the third power, so for the x, we've got to multiply the threes and get x to the ninth. The 3 is inside the parentheses, so that also has to be taken to the third power. So 3 to the third power is going to get us 27. So our answer here is going to be E, 27x to the ninth. All right, on the fifth problem, it's asking us what x to the 2 thirds is equivalent to. All that is is applying this rule of fractional exponents. So the denominator is going to be our root. So that's going to be our root. So it's going to be one of these. But the numerator is going to be our power. So uh, we're going to take it to the power. So we have the power of 2. So k is going to be our answer. And they also could have written it. Sometimes you might see the answer like this. This is also another possible answer as well. If the answer was written this way as well, you can have the 2 raised to the power on the inside or the outside. 
uh, but our answer for this one's going to be k. Okay, so here we have two things that are equal and try to solve for x. Um, in order to apply any of these rules of exponents, we have to have the same base. So we've got to convert these to something that has the same base. So we could look and see that 8 and 4 are both powers of 2. So we could change 8 into 2 to the third, right? 2 to the third power is 8. And that's going to be raised to the 2x plus 1. And then 4 we can change to to the second and that's raised to the 1 minus x. So the key here is finding a base that's going to be common because then we can apply these rules of exponents. So now when we raise to a power we multiply so we're going to get 2 to the 6x plus 3. We're multiplying the 3 times the whole thing, the 2x plus 1. Do the same thing over here. 2 to the second power raised to the 1 minus 2. We're going to multiply the 2 times 1 minus x. So we're going to get 2 minus 2x. Now we can set these two equal to each other because now we have the same base. So now this tells us that 6x plus 3 is going to equal 2 minus 2x. We can add 2x to both sides and get 8x plus 3 equals 2. Subtract 3 from both sides and get 8x equals negative 1. Divide by 8, and you're going to get x equals negative 1 over 8, or choice C. All right, and then the last problem, we're just doing distribution, uh, but we have to use the rules of exponents when we do distribution. So to this first term, the negative 8 and the 7 are just going to be multiplied as regular numbers and get us negative 56. But then when we multiply exponents, uh, we're going to add the exponents when we multiply. So we get x to the ninth. The second term, the negative 8 times the negative 3 is going to get us positive 24. When we multiply x to the third times x to the fifth, we're going to add the exponents to get x to the eighth. All right, and so we take a look at which answer matches that, and that's going to be choice A. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.